Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And I've done a lot of quick tips lately in Luminar Neo. This is going to be a long tip. This is not a quick tip, although I've got quite a few more quick tips. It's almost hard to say quick tips coming, but this is an advanced workflow for landscapes using HDR merge in Luminar Neo. I've got a photo from Iceland that I captured and um, I've been working through some processing techniques and some approaches and some thoughts about how I edit my photos. And uh, I'm kind of working through it. And this is my current workflow using HDR Merge. And I'm putting together my thoughts. And I'll come back with another future video about overall how I'm approaching editing. You may get a glimpse of that. Uh, actually, you will uh, get a glimpse of that in this video, although I may not necessarily talk about it directly. Anyway, this is a beautiful canyon. It has a very long name that I could never possibly pronounce. But I took a three exposure bracket. There's the dark one. That's the middle one, and that is the bright one. And then I took the three and I dragged them into HDR Merge, and I got this, which is my blended HDR merged uh, base product, if you will, right? A dark exposure, a medium exposure, a bright exposure stuck into HDR Merge, and I get a pretty nice balanced image where the uh, some of the brighter parts of the sky are balanced out and the darker parts of the canyon are balanced out as well. And so that's what HDR does, gives you a nice distribution of light across the entire photo. And while I love the technique and I still use it a lot, I'm using it a lot differently now than I did uh, a year ago and certainly way differently than I did five years ago. For example, I have already gone in and had the spots removed, which is in erase and is automatic, which I love. And now I'm in develop. Now remember, I took three raw files and blended them together. It makes a TIFF file. So when I use develop here, it's not develop raw, it's develop. Uh, but honestly, I'm not seeing a massive difference in results. But uh, the first thing I do is take these highlights down pretty significantly. I actually pull down the shadows a little bit as well. And then I go into color. And here I'm taking the temperature down a little bit. So like a 10 or 12. And I'm actually taking the tint up a little bit. This was a late afternoon. You can see the sun is about to set uh, kind of behind that canyon. And I'm going to give it a little bit of vibrance as well. I don't typically do saturation here. In fact, I don't use saturation a whole lot, maybe a little bit in the HSL panel in color, but I rarely use saturation here and I only occasionally use vibrance here. Um, and when I do, I use it a bit sparingly. But what I've done is basically taken the uh, base photo to uh, from that, which is my blended HDR. And now it looks like that. A little bit cooler overall. And one of the things you'll see me doing is kind of playing those warm tones and the cool tones off of each other, which I like to do in uh, my edits. Uh, anyway, Structure AI is the next thing. And I'm going to go to about, and I got to keep looking at my notes here. I go to about a 25 or so here. And here I'm going to take a linear gradient and I'm just going to drag that across the uh, the ground, basically. And I'm kind of blending it into uh, the, the top there. And honestly, I think that looks looks fine. So if uh, if you take a look at this, there it is before and there it is now. Notice that Structure AI, it adds that structure, what I like to call crunch, but it also adds a little bit of brightness, uh, which is kind of nice because the canyon is a little bit darker. It was somewhat in shadow. Obviously, the sun is setting behind that distant canyon, so um, uh, or behind the distant hill, I should say, in the canyon. Uh, was a bit in shadow. So using Structure AI there gives me a little bit of bump in light. Now I'm going to go do some more things that will get into some of the more kind of all this advanced workflow. It's not really advanced in the sense that it's hard. It's advanced in the sense that there's a lot of steps and you may or may not consider it complicated. The the moves are easy, but the all the com combination of all the moves, it adds up to a fair amount of work. Anyway, let me get on to it. Um, Accent AI, I love this tool and I like to use it on a lot of photos, but as I've talked about in previous videos, I don't want the whole thing applying across the entire photo. I don't want it to look like that. I want to drag that uh, into a certain part of the photo. Now, I always have to invert this and then I need to make an adjustment here in terms of the shape of this radial and I also want to pull that in a little bit and I want to expand that a little bit and then I'm going to twist it and what I'm trying to do is get some of that accent AI here to pop a little bit of the center of that canyon and honestly accent AI is so good at that and that's why I like to use it like this because it just gives me the ability to really pop a section of the photo without kind of going over the top um, across the entire photo which accent AI can do if you're not careful so if I go back to adjustments if you look at the before you can see it's quite a bit darker and the after now I've got a nice 
pop of light there, which I think helps uh, not just the visibility, because for me, my eye kind of goes down this hill and it catches the river and kind of goes through the canyon. But the sunlight where the sun is, it's hitting this section in the foreground, right in the very front bottom of the photo. And that helped to brighten it a little bit. So there it is one more time before Accent AI. And there it is now. Uh, and now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to develop and I'm going to get another radial gradient. And this one I'm going to put on the sun. And now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. First, I'm going to invert again. And in this case, you may notice that in the other one, I had a little bit tighter kind of radial. In other words, the inner circle and the outer circle, or in this case, oval, they were a little closer together. I'm going to spread them out a little bit more in this one, because um, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm creating basically uh, a particular look on the sun. Something about like that, I think looks good. Now, what I want to do is is going to adjustments and I'm actually going to lift the exposure a little bit and so I went to like high 60s there um, I also pulled contrast down to the negatives so in doing so it creates a little bit of a hazy kind of faded look because if there's no contrast contrast is the difference between dark and light which means some stuff is dark and some stuff is light that's contrast the uh, negative contrast creates a little bit more uh, almost an even distribution of light which makes it look a little bit hazier to me which is what I'm trying to do here because it's a setting sun and I I want it to look a little hazier and I'm going to give it a little bit of warmth as well. Um, I would be careful not to go too much because there's a fair amount of blue in that left hand of the sky and you just don't want to get something like this where you crank it up and make it really warm like that. I just think that looks a little over the top. So I was at a seven uh, and I think that looks good. Now if you look at the sun, there it is before. I mean it's a massive difference. So again, sun before and sun now. You've got a nice kind of beam, kind of a hazy, you know, orange glow for lack of a better word coming from the sun and I think that looks nice. That's a nice little tip for uh, just getting the sun to kind of look nice. Uh, mystical, I'm going to go get that and this is going to be a global application of this filter. In other words, across the entire photo. I like what it does. It creates a little bit more mood, see before and after by creating some contrast. So it enhances shadow and things like that. I think that looks nice. I'm going to go up to color now. Um, I'm not going to use saturation and vibrance, but I am going to uh, the overall tools because those are global unless you mask them in but i'm going to go into the hsl hue saturation and luminance which hsl is also here hue saturation and luminance i'm going to start with hue and what i'm going to do is the oranges uh there's not a ton but i'm going to take them a little bit uh to the right well actually not a little bit i go to about 40 which actually makes the orange a little bit more yellow um as you can see like it gets when you get all the way at the very end of this orange slider, it gets more yellow. And if I get all the way to the left, it gets more red, right? So that would kind of lead the very farthest left on this orange slider is kind of like the very farthest right on the red. Uh, and same with the like green and yellow and the yellow orange, right? The, the, the left end of one corresponds to the right end of the other, basically. Maybe not exactly, but that's kind of how I view it. I'm also going to take the yellow slightly left and give that a tiny, just a little bit of warmth, um, a little bit less yellow. Uh, then I'm going to go into saturation, and I'm going to give the yellow about a 10, so just a little bit of a bump here. And also there's a fair amount of green, as you can see in the photo, and I'm going to give that a 10 as well. And then I pop over to luminance. And here the yellow is getting a 25. So luminance is the brightness value of that color. And the reason why, by the way, I'm in HSL is because you're able to control the specific colors. Those uh, kind of color channels is a way I think of them. So I'm, I'm playing with the yellow channel right now. I'm making it brighter, which is what I want to do. I think, again, that corresponds to where the light is hitting. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit with the green as well, but only about a 10. So maybe something about like that. So that's HSL, individual color channels giving you control over how you know how all these colors are looking in your photo uh, and I'm applying all these globally I'm not going to do any masking here but you could come in and mask things in and then use the tool again and mask it in differently etc if you needed to so if you look at the before that's before any HSL and you look at it now slightly more warm in the kind of yellows and greens and slightly brighter is kind of what it comes down to but now that I've done that I'm going to get into develop tool and I know I've already used develop let's see twice so this would be the third time and then I've got two more after this, uh, three more after this. Um, there's a lot going on. That's why I call this an advanced workflow because I'm doing a lot of a lot of things. 
um, I don't want to say complicated uh, workflow. It's, it's you know, let's call it advanced. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to basically dodge and burn. So I'm going to go into masking and I'm going to get the brush. And um, I usually do strength of about 20. And what I want to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paint this in right over here. So you're going to see I'm just getting a very light kind of uh, pink kind of um look in that area because I'm not uh, painting at a high opacity. I'm painting at a very low opacity. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to give it a little bit over here as well and a slight bit in there. I'm just playing around a little bit. And I can come back and adjust it further if I want to. But what I want to do is darken this. So this is kind of the burning, if you will. So I'm going to go down like a negative 1.4, 1.45, something like that. And if I show you the before, if you look in those areas on the right hand side and the left hand side, that's before and the after just slightly darker. And that's again, because I used a, a low opacity brush of 20 and I went negative 1.45. Now I can go further and further negative and it'll get darker and darker. Notice it doesn't get black even though I'm at negative five and that's because I painted it in at a low opacity at strength of 20 basically. If I did full strength, that would probably be completely black. But uh, as it stands, you know, let's, let's call it 1.5 or so. Here I'm just creating uh, basically a burn, right? A uh, dodge and burn, but this is the burn. This is the darkening. Uh, and now that I've done that, I'm going to close the tool and then open it again. And I'm going to do the same thing. But uh, again, low opacity or low strength brush like 20. And I'm going to come in and uh, do the same thing, but of course, in different areas. And that is going to be just where the sun is hitting because what I'm going to do here, of course, is brighten these a little bit. And I'm just hitting some of these spots with my brush that I want the sun to be popping onto, right? Um, so I'm just directing the viewer's eye to certain parts of the photo and trying to create a little pops of light here and there. And I'm gonna do that by lifting the exposure a little over one stop, right? So like 112, something like that. I don't wanna make it extreme. Again, low strength brush. So I'm not, even if I go uh, 100 or five, whatever it's called, it doesn't blow it out completely. I mean, it looks terrible at five, but it's not completely white like you might expect it to be. And that's because low strength brush. So let's say I'm at 111, something like that. Again, just shaping the light a little bit. So if you look on that hill and down there through that part of the canyon and then in the foreground, there is now. So one more time, darker and a little bit lighter. So again, just shaping the light. All I'm doing is shaping the light. Now I'm going to get develop again. And the cool thing about develop, uh, after you've used it uh, on develop raw, the first time is the second time and any other time you have masking available. So I'm going to go into mask AI and I'm going to grab the sky uh, because it's going to do a better job of finding the sky than, um, than I would do on my own. I'm going to go ahead and click sky. It'll find that for me and it'll slap a mask on it. There it is. And now one of the things I like to do, if you notice the, the edge, right, where it blends together, I tend to come in and I get a brush and I get a paint and I'm going to lower the strength, like, let's say 30. And I'm going to get a small brush, maybe about like that. And I just come and I kind of paint along the edge. And what this does is it kind of blends that sky mask into the foreground or well, not the foreground, the, the, the distant hill. Basically, you can see the edge of the mask. And if you make very extreme moves, what's going to happen is the uh, the difference between the uh, what the sky AI I found and everything else is going to be fairly pronounced because that that's a hard edge. It finds the edge and it does a good job, but it doesn't perfectly get every single, you know, pixel. Uh, so I often come in with a brush and just kind of smooth over that a little bit just to give it a little bit of a, uh, of an adjustment, uh, just kind of adding to the mask, I guess is really what I'm doing. I'm adding to what skate, uh, sky AI did for me. Uh, I'm going to take the temperature down slightly. I darkened it uh, first. I dropped the exposure. Now I'm going to take the temperature down a little bit because I'm putting a little bit more blue in that sky. And if you look at the before and after of that sky, there it is before and there it is now. In fact, I'm going to pull back that exposure a little bit. I just wanted to darken it a little bit and give it a little bit more blue because I really like the blue and warm, right? Warm sunlight, warm yellows, and then the darker, the bluer is like the water in the canyon, some of the rocks and some of the sky. So it's 
It's that yellow and blue, which by the way, those are complementary colors. So um, they work well together. And so generally speaking, yellows and blues look great together. So it's pleasing to the eye, which is why I'm trying to enhance that in this photo. Okay, and now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back into develop. And I do this often at the very end of my edits. And that is I come back and I use develop and just apply it across the whole photo. So a global uh, develop, if you will. And that is just kind of fine tuning my overall edit. So this I ended up doing a smart contrast and pulled on the highlights a little bit, like a 15. I think I'll leave the shadow. Let me see here. I might play with the shadows a tiny bit. Yeah, maybe something. Maybe I'll lift the shadows a tiny bit. And then I'm going to come into temperature and tint and I'm going to play with this a little bit. And I think what I did, I got to check my notes. I went negative 10 on temperature and I went positive 10 on tint. Uh, let me look at that because I'm having to look at the numbers as I move them. But let me see. This is the overall addition to um, what I've done. So that was the uh, before I got into this most recent um, version of using develop. And then there it is with the overall look. And I think it's a little too blue. So I'm going to pull that back uh, a couple of points, uh, may maybe a negative seven. Uh, but I want to keep the blue and I like the blue. I just don't want to overdo the blue. I don't want to over blue it. There it is before. And there it is now. I think that looks nice. And then honestly, I'm just going to wrap it up with a vignette. One of the things I think about again is like, where do you want the viewer's eye to go in the photo? And I really want, you know, the sun is hitting the cannon and draw drawing their eye down through the canyon along the river. Um, and so that means choose subject to me and vignette. And I'm going to take the subject and I think I'm going to put it somewhere down in here. I just need to do that and then play with the vignette a little bit. And I want to see kind of I'm about there and then inner light, maybe, you know, 15, 17, something like that. Let me see. I think that there it is before the vignette and there it is now. Now, if you haven't hit choose subject again to kind of lock it in place, you can just basically bounce that all around the photo and just kind of audition different spots. I already know that I kind of want it down in here, but maybe it makes more sense to be uh, more directly in line with the path of the sun. I think that does make more sense. And so there it is before and there it is after. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that in, choose subject. And then I just kind of play with the amounts a little bit. I think I'm going to back off a tiny bit. Um, it adds, you know, thing about vignette, I mean, obviously by definition, it's darkening the edges. It helps add a little bit of contrast. And it kind of works, I think, with the dodge and burn and the different things that I've done. Uh, inner light, I think I'm going to take down just a few points so it's not too bright. And I think something about like that is uh, is what I like. And so there we go. That's my edit. Now, the truth is, I may come back and refine this. I actually think the foreground yellow is a little too yellow. So I think I need to come back. In fact, let's just do this. We're all friends here. I will just come in. And what am I going to do? I'm going to do saturation of the yellow. I'm going to pull that down a little bit, maybe about like like that and I'm just gonna mask it in with a linear gradient something about like that uh, maybe about like that so I'm gonna pull that back a little bit maybe like a negative 20 uh, so I think that looks good I don't want to mess with the yellows on the other side or the greens I like those even though they're a little bit intense foreground yellow is a little, little too much for me so there it is before and there it is now uh, and that's it that's my full edit my friends and my full kind of advanced HDR merge workflow, I guess is the best thing to call it. That's the photo that I started with uh, as an HDR merge. That is three exposures merged together in HDR merge, and then it creates a TIFF. And then I took it in over here to the edit tab and went uh, went to town on it. That's the uh, the base HDR, and that's my final product. So hopefully that gives you some ideas of how I would approach a landscape and kind of a advanced uh, HDR merge kind of workflow scenario. And I think if you see what I'm doing in terms of using develop multiple times and shaping the light and sort of trying to direct the eye of the viewer and things like that. These are the kind of things I've been thinking about a whole lot. Uh, not not just since Iceland, but part of that, I've been thinking about them a lot and um, doing more things like that. I've been working some of these things into videos, but I'm really starting to formulate an idea about how I want to edit. It feels like it's coming together, so I'm excited about that. And as I finalize and formulate my thoughts and really put it all together in kind of, I don't want to call it a system, that makes it sound too rigid, but once I sort out how I best feel like I can uh, educate and teach and share this. I'll be here doing that. Until then, I'll be uh, continuing to make videos here every week. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. Hope you had a great day today uh, or any day, whatever day it is, whenever you're watching this. I'll see you soon, my friends. You guys take care and until then, adios.